Thanks for tuning in early to worship today. I'm glad you're here. I'm Christopher Keywell, Communications Coordinator at Bethlehem, and your host in the comments section of Facebook at the 8.30 and 10.30 premieres. We'll continue to premiere these videos on Sunday mornings for the foreseeable future as it remains the safest worship option while COVID-19 continues to spread in our community. If it's your first time joining us for worship, I'd invite you to return in the future by liking our Facebook page, facebook.com slash BLC56301, or subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Bethlehem Lutheran Church ELCA. It's your generous support of Bethlehem that provides the technical resources and staff time needed to produce these videos each week. There are many ways you can offer financial support without an offering plate. You can mail in a check to 4310 County Road 137, St. Cloud, Minnesota 56301. You can use the text to give feature by texting a dollar amount to 320-289-4093 and following the prompts. For consistent support, even when you're unable to join us for worship, set up a recurring donation at BethlehemLutheran.org slash egiving. If you regularly use offering envelopes to make your gifts, the 2021 packets are available for pickup in Bethlehem Square during office hours 8.30 to 2.30 Monday through Friday or during on-site worship on Sundays. Please pick up your packet by February 28th. Speaking of your generosity, it's the third Sunday of the month, which means it's time for a financial update. As of January 31st, offerings of $83,000 were received, exceeding the newly approved budget amount of $69,000 per month. 2021 offerings also outpaced 2020 by over $25,000. Expenses for January came in under budget and actual income exceeded expenses by $24,000. Last month's giving to the mortgage fund fell about $5,000 short of the January payment. However, the fund balance remains healthy at more than two and a half months of payments in reserve, and we remain on pace to pay off the mortgage in August. Thank you for your continued generosity as we seek to fulfill God's mission for Bethlehem and our community. Now here's some ways you can grow in your faith and share God's love with our neighbors. At the semi-annual congregational meeting, the congregation voted unanimously to extend a letter of call to the to Pastor Stephanie Christoffels to serve as our worship and engagement pastor. Last week, Pastor Stephanie informed her current congregation that she would be leaving her call with them. Please keep Pastor Stephanie, her family, and the people of First Lutheran in Trimont in your prayers as they grieve an end to their ministry together. Pastor Stephanie has set a potential start date of June 1st, and Pastor Peter has agreed to extend his interim call to the end of May. During Lent, Bethlehem is exploring connecting our faith to our daily life. Each Wednesday evening in Lent, a short reflective worship video will premiere on Facebook at 6.30 p.m. and be available for on-demand viewing on our website and our YouTube channel. This week, Pastor Chad explores the topic, the value of time, with a very special guest via Zoom, Pastor Stephanie. Bethlehem is also connecting through small groups that are exploring six topics that connect our faith with our daily life. We had a great first week exploring how we are all built for community. If you haven't connected with a small group yet, contact Lene Cobb, Welcome and Serving Ministries Coordinator, for help in finding a spot in a group for the remainder of Lent. Log into a Zoom meeting on Tuesday, February 23rd at 3 p.m. to join another good book in a discussion of February's book. The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society by Marianne Schaefer. Visit BethlehemLutheran.org slash book club to request Zoom meeting details and preview upcoming books. During Lent, now through the end of March, the Mission Quilters are collecting items for personal care kits to be distributed through Lutheran World Relief. Pick up a shopping list of care kit items in Bethlehem Square as a handy reminder when you're out shopping. Monetary gifts are also welcome to purchase additional items needed to fill out each kit. The Shooting Star is a weekly email newsletter offering more ways to help advance God's mission for Bethlehem in our community. If you haven't subscribed yet, find a link at BethlehemLutheran.org slash communications. That's also the page where you can find other ways to connect with Bethlehem, including links to our social media and a way to sign up for important text message updates. Thanks again for tuning in to worship early today. The service will begin momentarily. In our hearts, Lord, 
in this nation awakening holy spirit we desire Good morning and welcome to Bethlehem Lutheran Church, our online worship. We're glad that you're joining us today, uh, wherever you are and whenever you're able to tune in. Know that uh, during this time of our worship life and season, which is now uh, in Lent, uh, we are especially mindful of the depth and the willingness to suffer on our account by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, just underscoring that uh, you and I are welcome uh, for who we are, as we are, in uh, this worship by the love of God. A couple of quick announcements. The first is that we're off to a real good start with our small groups. We have around 120 and we have just gotten through the first week. If any of you would still be like to sign up, we can accommodate that. 
just call uh, Lene um, Cobb at the office. Uh, she kind of knows where there might be some spots that, that uh, you could come to, and uh, I think uh, you'd really like it. They're having a good time. And then just to remind you that our online Lenten services begin this Wednesday at 6.30, and something you probably would like to know, we will follow, of course, the, the small group areas of focus, and this particular week it's going to be on the value of time. But the people giving a meditation on the online uh, worship will be none other than our pastor, Chad, and the pastor we just called. Uh, Pastor uh, Stephanie. So you may be interested in that. Well, let us begin our worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. We join our hearts in prayer. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood, you saved the chosen. And in the wilderness of temptation, you protected your son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's reading is from Genesis, chapter 9, verses 8 through 17. Today's reading is the conclusion to the flood story. Because of human sin, God destroys the earth by flood, saving only Noah, his family, and the animals on the ark. Yet divine destruction gives way to divine commitment, as in the first creation, God blesses humanity and establishes a covenant with all creatures. The reading begins at verse 8. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that will never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is a sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is with you and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never begin become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all the flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are the church, happy to be the children of God's family. We are the church, happy to be the children in God's family. We are the church, happy to be the children in God's family. We are the church, happy to be the children in God's family. Welcome back to another Chad Jacks. Well, welcome again to another one of Chad's Chats. We are with the Early Childhood Center Kids. Guys, can you wave to everybody at home and say hi? Hi! Hi! Oh. hi. Yes, excellent job. Okay, well, here it is again. The Mystery Blue Case. The case. Mystery Blue Case. What's going to be in it today? I think it's a tattoo. You think it's a tattoo? I think it's a tattoo. Puppy. It's, I think it's a it's puppy. A, a baby puppy. It's I not it's any of those things today. Today, the item to help tell our story is a boat. A boat. A boat. A boat. A boat. Wait a minute, this one that we died in a long time ago. Did you see this a long time ago? It's a well, the boat is coming back today because you know what? Wait, I actually have to ask you a couple questions first. How many people in the summertime? 
like to go on a boat. Raise your hand if you like to go on a boat like in the summertime I on a do. boat. Does anybody um, like saw, does anybody like to fish do. off of a boat? Do you guys like to fish off of a boat? Yeah, I do. Yeah? I like to Okay, okay, let me ask you one more question. Oh. On a boat, raise your hand if you would rather go really fast. You want to go fast on a boat? Or really slow? You don't like to go very fast. I like to go fast. You like to go fast? I like to go fast. Okay, great. Here we go. So I brought a boat today, and you're right. You know what? I think I have used this before because today, in the story that the people will hear, it's a story about a boat. In fact, it's a really big boat. And on this really big boat, there are animals and people. It's a story of Noah and Noah's ark. And so here's what we need to know about that. Just know this, that in the story of Noah and Noah's ark, God cares about Noah and his family and all of creation enough to help them and to save them from, from bad things that are happening. But we're going to learn more about that today, guys. Actually, we're going to take the story of Noah that we learned when we were kids, many of us, and actually hear it again differently from our adult um, perspective and really what that has to tell us. So that's going to be the introduction to today's message. Thank you guys for helping out with that. I want to talk to you more about boats in just a second, but we have to end this for everybody. Can you say goodbye to everybody at home? Goodbye. Well done. So. Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. The spirit that comes upon Jesus at his baptism sustains him when he is tested by Satan so that he might proclaim the good news of God's reign. The reading begins at verse 9. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This year's Lenten theme is connecting faith and daily life. As a community of faith, that is what we are about. We have a story that is unique to us, a story that shapes how we live in the world. In other words, we have a story that helps us to live each day of our lives more closely connected to God and with our neighbors. Stories absolutely shape us, and the story of our faith can be powerful when it connects to our life. If you think about it for just a moment, you know the, powers, the power of stories. I realized this in a significant way years ago when I found an assignment that I had written while I was in high school. I found it in a box or something like that while I was visiting my parents' house. As I was reading this assignment, decades after leaving high school, I remember thinking to myself, wow, 
this sounds an awful lot like my parents. The assignment was some kind of reflection on, on who I am as a person. And, and that's what I came away with. Wow, this is my mom. This is my dad. <laughs> Go figure, right? The stories I heard growing up absolutely shaped my worldview and the way that I saw myself and others. Other stories have shaped me since then, but the stories we encounter when we are young, those are incredibly powerful stories. The story of your particular political party absolutely shapes the way that, that you see our country, how it should function, and how right or wrong your fellow citizens are. You have a particular narrative in your head about how to understand wealth that is often constructed from your past experience of either having money or, well, not. So much of how we make sense of the world comes to us in narratives, in the stories that we are told in the past, the stories that we continue to tell ourselves in the present. This is why it's important to connect the story of our faith to the story of our life. Today we have a reading that focuses on Noah, a story that many of you have heard before, especially if you attended any kind of Sunday school growing up. If I were to take a stab at what you heard about this story when you were young, it probably went something like this. Once upon a time, there were many bad people in the world, but Noah was good. God was upset with all the bad people in the world, but not with Noah, because well, Noah was good. <laughs> so God told Noah to build a big boat, and Noah did what God said because Noah was good. After Noah built his big boat, two of every kind of animal came and got in the boat. The rains came. There was a big flood, but Noah and the animals had a great time together and soon it was over and all the animals got off the boat and so did Noah and his family. And God told Noah that God would never again flood the world and put a rainbow in the sky. And Noah was very happy. The end. Oh, and Here's a picture of a smiling Noah and a rainbow. Please color it in. <laughs> well, you were a kid. At a young age, this is how the story is often presented. But I have to ask you, is that still where this story is at for you? Does the story of Noah connect to your life in a profound way to help you see differently, to help live more fully connected to the world that you inhabit? <laughs> well, several years ago now, maybe it's more than several, I was with a group of kids. I read them the story of Noah without showing any smiling pictures and then I asked them if this was a happy story or a sad story. And they said it was a sad story. And I asked them, well, why? And they said, well, because a lot of people died. Then they asked, why did God kill everyone? <laughs> Kids are really smart. What I have found is that questions like this that start at a young age just get more pronounced as we get older, to the point where people who grew up in communities of faith that are now teenagers or young adults or even older adults say that these stories don't work for them, that they don't mean anything. After all, in the classic children's story of Noah and the Ark, did God just commit what we would call genocide? Are you okay with that? I, again, does this story profoundly shape your life? There is a great opportunity to reclaim the stories we often encounter as children and hear them again as adults in new ways. This is a story told by ancient Israel, not as a history lesson, 
but as a theological lesson. It's the community's understanding of God that is so interesting in this story. And often when it comes to the Old Testament or Hebrew Bible stories, listening to Jewish voices can be really, really helpful to grasp the depth of the story. So Mary Brett Copeland, a rabbinical student, is quick to point out that this story begins with God who is in deep, deep sadness and utterly grieving. Things have gone terribly wrong with the world. It was not supposed to be like this. It was supposed to be good and it's not turning out to be that way and God is absolutely devastated and heartbroken. Mary goes on to write that this realization of God's sadness does not make this story any easier. The scale of violence required to annihilate everything is unfathomable. Acknowledging that God is both parent to all and destroyer of all is what makes Noah so painful. This pain is hard to live with, so we try to sanitize our text. Today, when we read the story of Noah, we dehumanize the other humans of Noah's generation. We blame Noah for not protesting. We morph these words into children's story. We decorate nurseries with rainbows and animals in pairs of two. We do everything we can to avoid the horror. And yet, if we can resist our urge to pretty up a devastating narrative, we can come a little bit closer to knowing God's grief through our own heartache. <laughs> I really, I really like that. When the ark is built and the animals accounted for, God seals up Noah and his family. Then God recedes from the story. That's an interesting part of the story. While the floodgates of the sky break open, while the springs of the earth burst forth, while the rains last for 40 days, while the ark floats for a full year with no sign of life, God is nowhere to be found in this story. Again, a word from Mary. The Torah does not explain God's absence during the year that the whole world drowned, but our text's attention to God's grief and regret offers a possible insight. God's sadness was so great that God had to step away as the earth was consumed, not by divine rage or divine retribution, but by God's own intolerable grief. This intolerable grief and divine absence is not how the story ends. From the depths of the water and the depths of despair, from the near annihilation of everything, God comes back to us. By coming back, God resolves to never end the world again and enters into a specific covenantal relationship with human beings. By coming back, God demonstrates to us that coming back is possible. Where might this story connect with our life? Well, let me tell you. Have you ever messed up? And I mean, have you really messed up before? Have you ever lost it to the point where you believed that the relationship you had with your kids, your spouse, your parents, your friend, your neighbor, or even the relationship that you had with yourself was so far gone that nothing, nothing could bring it back? Have you ever acted rashly to cut yourself off from another before they could hurt you? Have you ever regretted a decision an action, a word that you uttered in frustration, anger, or grief that tore someone else down, that absolutely shattered them. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, well, you will because that is what it means to be human. We, we do this to each other. And when this happens, what story will help guide you through this? What story will you tell yourself? 
Oh, by the way, have you heard the story of Noah, which is really a story about God, which is really a story about us? If we are able to access God's grief through our own heartache, we open ourselves up to the possibilities that we could never see before and the possibility of even transformation, of a changed life. When we witness God almost give up on everything, we see the power of persisting when there is no reason to hope. We see that there is a second chance always in life. It's easy to permanently disengage from the horrors of the world, from broken relationships, but the story of our faith, the story of Noah, urges us to resist that temptation. In Noah, God teaches us, above all, the significance of resilience through relationship. God shows us that it is possible to come back from paralyzing despair again and again and again and again. Is this the story of Noah that you know? Jesus, the rabbi, lives into this story. He picks it up. He enacts it. He calls it the kingdom of God. And he calls his disciples to continue to follow in this way of being. This is the story of Noah. This is the good news that we hear today. Thanks be to God for that. Amen. Just the sum of every high and every low. Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. Ooh, oh, you say.
We continue now with our time of offering as we continue to go into 2021 with our ministry plan in faith and hope of the leading and guidance and blessing of God in the ministry that is set before us. From normal times to unusual times, but always we thank you for your part in the support of this ministry, the participation of this ministry, uh, as we together are seeking to be a community that reflects the love and the purposes of God. So thank you for that. You see the directions for making a contribution online before you. from wherever you've been come broken hearted let the rescue begin come find your mercy oh sinner come kneel earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal lay down your burden Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, your reign has come near to us in every place and time. Give your church throughout the world a spirit of humility and repentance. May we in this country come to better understand and anticipate 
the cultural changes, both in their challenges to our ministry and in the opportunities they present. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness. Direct the words and actions of leaders in our community and throughout the world, that they maintain justice for the lowly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Even in the wilderness times of life, you are with us, perhaps even especially so. Sustain those of us who find ourselves in a wilderness of spirit and watch over those whose wilderness is literal danger, refugees crossing dangerous lands or living in camps with no hope in sight. We pray for the Buffalo community reeling as it is from the violence of this past week and those who live in failed states or lands of famine Guide and sustain our ministries of Lutheran Disaster Relief, ELCA World Hunger and Disaster and Refugee work of the Lutheran Church, that they and others bring comfort and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen this congregation's ministries of care and concern. We pray for those who have asked for our prayers in times of illness. Healing God, bring your touch of comfort, salvation, and wholeness to those suffering in body, mind, or spirit. We pray for Jolene Perkins, Jenny Miller, Ralph Searles, Monica Anderson, Kristen Markfort, Anya Bohm, Lillian Johannes, Bill Olson, Barb McPhail, Don Tucker, Jenny Koshol, Don Sorenberger, and Tom Albert. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our service now comes continues as we prepare to gather around the Lord's table. So much of Jesus' ministry, of course, is based around those he ate with, and it is in this period of Lent as we go to Holy Week that he did a remarkable thing in terms of the meals that were shared and brought to us a sacrament that so intimately communicates God's presence in our lives and his forgiveness of our sin. And for that sin, we want to confess as a preparation for a communion. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, we confess that we've sinned in thought, word, and deed, but what we have done and by what we have left undone Forgive us and strengthen us to turn from sin and to serve you in newness of life. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending him. Oh,
in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had blessed it, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be our, your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now as we distribute communion, the body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ in his holy and precious blood strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and unto everlasting life. Peace be with you. Amen. Prison 
shaking Savior, you got chains. He's a chain breaker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking Savior, you got chains. He's a chain breaker. Now receive God's blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. <laughs>